Hi, I'm Chaplain Stoney Douth at Southeast Chaplain Recruiting Station in Atlanta, Georgia. We are seeking the most qualified religious professionals to become chaplains in the U.S. Army and the U.S. Army Reserve. Chaplains have to be prepared to serve. And today we're talking about the standing power throw. to our series prepared to serve we're focusing on fitness and especially the elements of the ACFT the new army combat fitness test as they relate to people who are thinking about coming in to the army as a chaplain or maybe some of us who are already army chaplains and uh, we're just trying to get better and do better on the test so this is an educational based um, test or series just designed to help us do better on that test and prepare us to be more fit so that we can serve. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, and share, um, and get this message out there and to as many people as possible. And then also understand that I am not a medical professional. Um, if you are in the military, you should seek your um, master fitness trainer's advice, or maybe your doc, and if you're a civilian, check with your doctor, make sure that you are not doing anything you shouldn't be so as to hurt yourself with this, because I'm just trying to tell you what I've done to get better at this test, um, not give you any kind of advice um, for yourself. You take this as it is. So uh, that being said, today we are focusing on the standing power throw. And as you saw earlier, I demonstrated that outside. Um, inside, we've got the ball. So the first thing you're gonna have to have to learn to do the uh, standing power throw is a 10 pound ball. You could have a different size ball, a different um, you know, weight ball, but this is the one that we're using or something's very similar to it. It's got a little grippy on it, which turns out to be very important. It's 10 pounds. And the truth is that if you're not training uh, and trying this test as is in the environment you're going to be doing it and with the equipment you're going to be doing it with, you may as well really not be training it. Um, if you're just going to walk out there and expect to throw a ball the first time and, and pass, you're Many of you are going to fail. Let's just be honest about it, okay? Um, some of us are going to have the natural coordination and strength to heave it the minimum amount uh, over your back, but many of us will not. It will either be a coordination issue, a, a situational issue, which, uh, which there are some things that out there that can complicate matters, um, or maybe just a strength issue with not having the right thing. So, so the, the, the basic form here is you're, you're doing a squat, you don't have to do a full squat. You don't have to get way down here, but you're doing a squat so that you're engaging your legs. So your legs are popping. Um, you're engaging your back as you're coming up, and then your biceps are flinging that ball backward. So basically you're going down here. A lot of people are kind of throwing it like, you know, prep it like this, and then when you're ready, you just heat it. So how do we train at that? So, well, you can train by throwing it. I suggest you do that more often than anything. It's find the ball. Um, find something that you can throw safely, find an area um, that you can train and throw it. And that brings us to our first issue. So many of us are not gonna have the resources to have the ball or a place to throw it. Uh, the Army's doing better at getting more facilities and more resources, but in my environment, I had to buy it. I had to get it myself, and not everybody's gonna have the opportunity for that. And I don't really have a great place to train it and throw it. So what happens if you can't do that? What's second best? Well, uh, or what are some training techniques? Well, um, I would say if you can't train it as is, then do the next best thing. So if you don't have a ball, maybe you've got a dumbbell, right? A dumbbell or a kettlebell. And certainly a dumbbell or kettlebell swing. This exercise is the same basic motion. And here I've basically doubled the weight. But you also notice that I'm not really trying to throw it over my head because I can injure myself. And then I'm also not engaging my biceps as much as I would in the actual ball throw, because my hands are different, right? Maybe you could turn it like this, try that, that might be a little different, right? Um, you could also do what are called goblet squats to get that the same motion, 
and kind of pop it up at the top. Maybe a goblet squat to press, something like that. That might be helpful. But the truth is, there's not much that trains this uh, exercise, this event, other than just getting the ball and going and doing it, right? So one of the known issues with this when we get out to the testing field is that the ball gets wet. If you think about it for just a second, um, when is the Army going to perform this test? Nine out of ten times, this Army's going to the, the Army's going to perform this test probably between six and eight a.m. And where are they going to do this test? Nine out of ten times, it's going to be outside on a PT field of some kind, right? In the grass or on turf. And what's also outside at between six and eight a.m. on turf or on grass, on an exterior field, either dew or frost, depending on what time of the year it is. In other words, most of us are gonna perform all of these movements on wet grass, which is not an issue for most of them, but for this one it is. This ball, after the first throw, this ball is gonna be wet. Um, Forward-thinking units, or even yourself, might bring towels and dry it off. Otherwise, people are gonna be picking this ball up rubbing it on their shirts, trying to get any kind of grip they can. Because I can tell you personally that once you throw it and it gets wet, it's very difficult to keep your hands on the sides of it and still make the throw without it slipping out. And it's easier to kind of get your hands behind it and throw it. I don't see anything in the regs that prevent that. It just says you have to have both hands on it. You can't just take one hand and heave it. It's got to go over your back. Um, However, I, I, I anticipate there to be issues with that um, army-wide in many formations. So the best thing to do to overcome that, to train it, is to train the event and take a towel and do it as often as you can. And every rep you do, you're probably going to do better, right? There's a pretty low chance of injury on this as long as you keep your back straight as you're doing it and don't try to do too much and build up to it slowly. Other... Um, other exercises that might be helpful in the long run might be uh, wall ball shots. You know, anything that you're doing the, the core and pushing weight is going to be helpful. So a 20 pound wall ball shot might be helpful. Um, just doing cur curls, squats in general, stuff like that. Anything to do the entire body is it's pushing weight. This is a pushing exercise. Um, and yet at the top, it's a pull with your arms. So technically this is a bicep pull while it's a whole body push at the same time. Um, the, the next thing I would say is expect that you're not going to get it right the first time. If you haven't done this, you're going you're gonna to have to figure out the mechanics. You can't step over the line. Uh, so this is a lot more like a track and field event uh, stuck in here. I think it's a good event, uh, but I probably think that because I don't struggle with passing it. I can kind of chuck it over my head without a lot of effort and pass um, because I'm built for that. But if you are light, if you're a light person, um, I mean, light and weight, you're, you're going to perhaps struggle with this. And so, and there's no way around it other than you got to be able to get up to throwing it a certain distance. So, uh, I think this is a fairly straightforward, I probably over talked this one. Um, however, if I haven't gotten the message across, you should be going and practicing this. And if, if you can't, you're, you're probably going to be hurt when it comes time. The upside is the army's giving us another whole year to practice and get better at this before anybody's held to the standard. Don't use that year uh, for nothing, right? Go out and find a ball and train it. It's worth, for me, it was worth getting a ball just to, to be able to have it in my hand and throw it. And a couple of times a week, just to go out and toss it. It's not a high energy workout. You gotta, you only get, gotta have to throw it like twice, right? Um, so if you throw it three or four times a week, you're gonna get better at it naturally. any questions you have just throw those in the comments reach out uh, ask questions uh, about this event and uh, also of course about army chaplaincy which is our goal here uh, on this channel and uh, thank you for, for watching and enjoying the video I hope it's helpful to you most of all I hope it, that it's helpful for those of you that are considering to become uh, army chaplains either in the US Army or the US Army Reserve and for you future chaplains out there let's get prepared to serve for God and country